Good. I think we should be good. Okay. Um, let me hand. I'm going to hand the host off to you. Um, okay. Do you see a thing that says your co-host? Okay, so you're good. Right, Have you. a good meeting. Yep. Oh, just so you know, oops, when you get done, yep. um, you see there's like a record button up to the top right. It should be blinking at you. Yep. Just um, you'll want to hit pause. Pause. Okay. And then stop. Pause and then stop, and then you can leave the meeting for all. And that's down at the bottom right. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great. Have a good meeting. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone. We'll uh, get started for roll call, make it easier. Everyone can just type your name into the chat. We appreciate it. Do we have any uh, public comments? Mr. Mayor, do you have any comments? Uh, none at this time, John. Thank you. All right. And then we got to uh, approve the minutes from the last meeting. I know Chief Rich sent them out. Motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, any opposed? Staying? Past. Do we have any commission member comments? Wayne, do you want to bring up the guy you were mentioning? Yeah, I can. Um, we have a new member. I don't know if he signed on yet. Um, our operations manager, John uh, Bonaro. Um, and he should, I asked him to sign on. He may, maybe he got tied up, but I want to introduce him to the uh, committee. He will be uh, helping me with some security items and taking over certain issues on the security end. Um, make my plate a little lighter. Uh, so if he does log in, I'll uh, reintroduce him again. All right. Anyone have yeah, any comments? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne, this is Mike. I'm on. I dialed in. Okay. Good. Mike, this is a group. Um, basically, anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to Mike. Uh, over the next few months, he'll be getting more and more involved in the security end. I'll still be working with him. We'll kind of work in partnership, so one of us can cover if the other one's on vacation or out or something like that. Okay. Thanks. All right. Does anyone have any uh, subcommittee reports? Moving on to old business. You know, we wanted, Chief Rich, you want to have a discussion on the state radio system? I think we might have might have lost them. Does anyone have any other uh, things they want to John, discuss? In the chat box you sent, yeah, I have no audio. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. Oh, so, all right, we'll give them a minute.
Chief, you're muted right now. And I think John had asked if you wanted to open the conversation about the uh, state police radio. Thank you, Mayor. Um, sorry, we had a little technical difficulty here on my end. Um, so in regards to the, um, the state radio system, um, back in the early stages of the pandemic, I had uh, engaged the mayor in um, seeing if we could at the very least get the bridge, the radio bridge installed here at uh, Ledger Emergency Communications. And with a little bit of work by him, myself and Jim, um, and an MOU with the state, we, we, are, we are up and running. We have the radio bridge in, um, in LECC. We don't have any hardware um, other than what's inside here, uh, other than our, our two newest vehicles our equipment mobile radios to uh, be able to support the system. But right now we're still operating on UHF like everyone else is and um, still have probably many meetings to, to, to go with the users um, in the local area, including uh, Norwich PD, Stonington PD, the two Grottens and um, um, sorry, I'm seven, a little bit of a brain cramp, but um, we have uh, a users meeting coming up uh, with the state, and that is, I believe, April 29th. And I'm not sure if anybody else has that uh, has that invitation, but if not, I will send it out um, for those of you who are interested in learning more about it. But um, what goes without saying, it's it, it's going to allow us to uh, communicate directly with. Um, reliability with our surrounding mutual aid partners. And that would go for um, the fire companies as well if if you guys were interested in um, also be, becoming part of the system. So I have, um, I mean, I, I can pull up and display with uh, using my screen, the um, hardware approximate cost that we have in, in an estimate from last year if you guys are interested in that, um, let's see if I can get that going. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. So these were these are the original estimates. Um, you can see the uh, the bridge is already in, and that that was the exact number that fourteen thousand eight hundred four fifty. And that's been paid for. We've also requested reimbursement from uh, FEMA um, use, using Jim uh, as well as my, and the mayor's office, as well as my uh, justification that I, I wrote for Jim as well. Um, the, the thought being, and the reason being at the beginning of the pandemic, um, nobody knew what it was gonna look like as, as it relates to staffing and whether or not we were, we're all gonna get hammered with uh, staffing shortages intermittently and um, being able to talk to each other was became of critical importance at that point if we had to have say mutual aid uh, covering our patrol from the state police or Stonington PD or Groton Town or whoever. Um, I think that goes with pretty much with everybody. We've been super fortunate throughout the pandemic that we, we only had three three officers so far that uh, did were impacted and none of them uh, passed it on to anyone else in, within the department. So they were all um, around the same time, but all different uh, situations. So um, if you look at the, the, the portables, we're, we're, uh, the first portable that they quoted us was at 2385, and now they've um, upgraded, upgraded to a uh, Tate Harris portable with a noise, noise canceling feature. And those run about 3,063 a piece. And I think if we, if we were gonna do it and seek grant money, then that's the way we would, we would wanna go with it. Um, and then the mobile radios are around $3,200. So we um, put the mobile radios in the two newest cruisers um, because obviously they were being outfitted and it only made, made sense to actually do that at the time. But we, we only have two vehicles that are actually capable. 
as it stands right now, uh, we could operate with us on UHF and any incoming mutual aid company on 800 um, and talk to them as long as we're in our service area and we can hit our towers. And, um, but we wouldn't be able to go any distance from Ledger PD and actually reliably, reliably communicate with another department in their own, in their town. Um, so we, we'd be doing like a mix uh, if we were doing it in town here. So um, that's basically where it stands right now with, it's kind of in its infancy, we started the project. Uh, we're looking for funding. Um, last year's capital improvement uh, request was cut understandably. And um, I have talked to uh, Nick Bosom who um, had been working on a, uh, a radio grant with the Gales Ferry Fire Company. And we just compared a couple little notes there, but you know, I know there, I believe that there's grant, grant money out there for fire companies and grant money for police departments uh, has become, been a little scarce for ma many factors, including, including politics. And during the, uh, the last pres presidential administration, there was a withholding of um, JAG funds from Connecticut based on certain practices that Connecticut undertakes. And uh, I think that might be opening up a little bit uh, as well, so that's that's where we stand right now with the uh, with the radio project. Now, um, I guess I'll take any questions that anybody has that I that I can answer reasonably answer from what, what we're doing right now. Chief, one quick question, Mayor: um, What is the anticipated? Uh, uh, longevity of this, uh, these radios and this system? I, I think, well, the system would be you know, dependent on the state, the state system, which so uh, perpetuity, I would think with that, um, as long as we have police officers and public safety in Connecticut, um, the mobile uh, and portable radios, I, the, the, the life on those would be, uh, I, I would imagine up to 20 years or, or more, depending on how much use that they actually get. So um, generally, we get sev several years, uh, you know, potentially up to twenty years out of out of a um, high quality radio, um, provided that there's no it, provided it's maintained and that there's no um, you know accident or whatever it ends up in water or whatever like that. So we should be in. I mean, it wouldn't be a five year project, Mayor. I'm thinking more like twenty. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, Chief, you had mentioned that we did apply to greet FEMA for reimbursement for that 14 grand. Yes. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we got our request in, but unfortunately in August, they changed the rules. So they initially denied it, we're appealing it, but it, it could be upwards of a year before we hear anything. And with the rule changes, it's gonna be really hard to get anything out of them. Okay, uh, it was good to know. And, and, and we, did, we did take advantage of you know, existing money that was uh, right. there for the um, replacement and or repair of um, major radio components uh, on both ends of both emergency management as well as with the dispatch center. So I feel, um, I, I, I thought it was a bargain actually, what, what we got uh, in the capability oh, yeah. of that money. I think it was a wise idea. Mm. And it was funny, our, our FEMA guy in, from Dana, he actually said, yeah, this is a good idea. And then they turn around, deny it. <laughs> yeah. of course yep. your government at work yeah i i think you know in all in all the project would be you know somewhere in the neighborhood of for the police department at least somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 115 to 120 thousand dollars would be the um the the total cost um again looking looking for uh grant money hopefully it's going to shake loose in the in the next uh, not too long distant future here Is it okay to take my screen down? Are you guys good with that? I'm good. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. So I know um, some people probably heard about it already. Um, Groton fire departments are looking at switching over to the state system too now. Um, myself and Chief Sacone, we talked about it and we just spent a decent amount of money on upgrading our 
our radios to the current frequency. So we have no plans to, to change over anytime soon to the state system. I know that depending where things go across the board through all, all towns, we'll, but we might consider it a little bit differently, but just in case if anyone had any questions on that, we're not looking to switch anytime in the near future. John, what if what if there was an opportunity for for grant for grant funding for that? Would, would that would that change your your stance? Um, you know, if we could get a grant, probably. Um, I mean, we don't want to just go out and spend a bunch of money to replace radios that we just replaced already. Um, but you know, if the grant opportunity was there, probably. I will say the uh, region four gave me a tri band that's on the state system. It is pretty convenient to be able to talk to people from halfway across the state and whatnot. It's very handy because they have group channels. If something happens, you go to that channel and everybody's connected. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I um, saw as well is, you know, we, we don't, we'd always have because, because of the hardware and frequencies that we have now, um, redundancy on UHF. If we ever, if we ever needed that, um, depending on uh, if there was a failure somewhere else, so I, I we plan on keeping um, our UHF capability because that's how we communicate with public works and senior senior van if we have to or or whoever they that's how they get into dispatch and, and as well as now the schools. So I think it's important to note that we we wouldn't we wouldn't be um, um, getting rid of that um, UHF capability. In, in favor of this particular system. I think we, we would want to be able to go multi-band um, and be able to talk to our mutual aid partners. I think that's the most important thing. All right. Does anyone have any other old business? How about uh, new business? Anything to discuss? John, this is Wayne from schools. Yep. Just wanted to update everybody. Um, we're in the process of doing some rekeying at uh, the high school, middle school, uh, not the middle school, high school, Gales Ferry and Juliet Long. Uh, I've been working with uh, Chief Mann on the, uh, moving the uh, keys over in the Knox boxes so that the fire department and whatnot have access. Um, so as those progress along, we'll be changing those keys out in the Knox boxes. All right, sounds good. Any other new business? All right, our next meeting will be June. I believe it's the 14th, same time. Um, depending on where things are at, we'll determine if it'll be Zoom or in person. And then that that is all I have. John, I, for, I, I forgot to break, I didn't, for some reason I couldn't unmute. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, May 4th is a, practice drill for, you know, the Holocaust over Millstone with it, the actually evaluated drill being on June 8th. So stand by for more on that. We don't know how many people we're going to stuff in the EOC or are we going to do some of it remotely? It all depends where we're going with COVID. Uh, just to let everybody know, we had a slight uptick in the last week in town too. So keep your guard up just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you won't catch it and you won't transmit it. It's still here. And statewide, statewide, we're not down to where we were last August. We're still about triple what we were last August. So it's still very active. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? same. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care, everybody.